So, yeah, here we are in 2025, and uh, I'm still getting hit with the same question from members on Patreon. Where are your view models? And yeah, whether it's a little personal side app, a freelance build for a client, or something I've tossed up as open source, someone spots it right away. No view model layer, no extra middleman between the UI and the rest of the app. Yeah, sure. I get why that throws people off if you've been living in iOS dev land for a while. You've probably been trained to think MVVM is the the grown up proper way to do things. Like if you're not separating everything out into neat boxes, you must be doing it wrong. But here's the thing, you don't need them. You never did. And honestly, you probably never will. Real quick, yeah, I'm Daniel. I've been in the iOS game for what, almost eight years now? Mostly freelancing, shipping apps for other people, doing the whole like, help build your dream app thing. But since Dub Dub 25, I've been all in on the solo dev life, building in public, shipping my own stuff, seeing what sticks. And yeah, kind of figuring out this whole personal brand thing as I go. That's a story for another video, but for now, let's get into it. All right, so here's why this actually matters when you're building solo. When it's just you, you're not only writing the code, you're, uh, you're the PM, the designer, the tester, and yeah, the person answering those, those awkward support emails when something breaks. Every single architectural decision is yours. There's no senior dev looking over your shoulder saying, hey, let's keep this simple or we probably don't need that extra layer. And now if you're like me and you've got Claude code or cursor sitting next to you in the workflow, you're also wearing the AI Wrangler hat while guiding them, making sure they don't overbuild uh, for the sake of looking proper. So, because here's the thing, uh, these tools are quick they're confident and they're trained on mountains of code bases that default to MVVM or some other heavyweight pattern. If you just say add a feature, they'll happily hand you a brand new view model, a service layer, maybe even a little helper object or two, all for something you could have banged out in 20 lines inside a single view. Not because they're wrong, just because they don't know your scaling plan. and keeping things lean from day one makes it so much easier for AI to actually help uh, without making more work for you down the line. The structure you choose now is the one you're going to live with for months. If it's light, you'll fly. If it's bloated from the start, you're going to feel that drag every time you make a change. For a solo dev, that's not just a performance thing, that's survival. So. Here's the thing, the MVVM trap is simple. It's bringing UI kit habits into Swift UI without stopping to question if they still make sense. Back in the UI kit days, we were stuck with massive view controllers that did everything. MVVM came along and gave us a, a way to separate concerns, move logic into a view model, and keep the UI layer cleaner. It was a huge improvement back then, but yeah. Swift UI is built on a different philosophy. Your views are structs, they're disposable, recreated all the time and designed to be a direct expression of state. The data flow is built in. You don't need an extra object to sit in the middle and translate data to UI. The framework already does that for you. When you add a view model uh, to a Swift UI view by default, you're fighting against the grain. You're introducing more boilerplate, more files to keep in sync, and more places for bugs to hide. You're solving a problem Swift UI doesn't actually have. All right, um, so that's what this actually looks like when you're in the trenches. Let's say you're adding a new recent activity screen to your app. So nothing wild, just a list of items coming in from an API. If you've still got that old MVVM muscle memory, your first instinct is probably to spin up a view model, slap some published properties in there, inject your networking service, and wire it all into the view. On paper, it looks tidy. In a diagram, it even feels right. But in Swift UI, you really don't need to go through all that ceremony. You can just keep the state right in the view itself. 
maybe an enum with three cases, loading, error, and loaded item. Inject your API client through the environment, kick off the fetch and a dot task modifier, and boom, your entire screen's logic and UI are living side by side in one file. You can read it in one pass without flipping between tabs or wondering where something's coming from. So now bring AI into the picture. If you tell Claude, hey, add a refresh feature and all the relevant logic is right there in one place, it can follow along and slot in exactly what you need. But if your code is scattered across three files buried under a view model and peppered with extra abstraction layers, now the AI has to jump around piecing things together. And that's when you start getting half-baked changes or broken suggestions. Keeping your structure simple isn't just about you being able to move faster. It's about giving AI a fair shot at being genuinely helpful. And yeah, just so we're on the same page here, when I say MVC, I'm not talking about the old school massive view controller disaster from the UI kit days. I mean, MVC as it naturally works in, in Swift UI, your models are where the data lives and where the business logic happens. Your views are these clean, pure state renderers. And the controller part, in Swift UI, that's usually just your environment injected services or a tiny bit of coordinating glue, not some big bloated class running the whole show. When you stick to that kind of setup, everything stays right where you can see it. Need to add a feature? You already know exactly which file you're touching. AI wants to generate some code for you. It's not going to spin up extra layers out of nowhere because you've already drawn the lines in the sand. And if you ever have to rip something out or refactor, you're not pulling at one thread and watching the whole sweater unravel. You just change what you need and move on. This is the kind of structure AI tools actually thrive in. You can hand Claude or Cursor a single file and say, optimize this or add a pull to refresh, and they can see the whole thing at once. No scavenger hunt across multiple layers. No guessing what's safe to touch. That's when AI starts feeling like an actual teammate sitting next to you, not just some code vending machine spitting out disconnected. Oh boy. I'm not going to pretend this whole keep it lean thing works for every single situation. There are times like when you're building some big gnarly form wizard or a multi-pane editor with a bunch of moving parts where the state can get complicated enough that, yeah, breaking it out into its own object starts to make sense. But even then, I don't jump straight to a full-blown view model. I start with small self-contained views and only pull logic out when it's obvious the view is getting overloaded and hard to follow. The real trick is not adding structure just because it feels proper. That's where AI can trip you up too. If you tell Claude or Cursor, make a view model for this, they'll go all in, scaffolding the whole thing, adding layers you didn't actually need. Instead, I'll nudge them toward lighter moves like split this view into two smaller ones or extract just the form validation into a helper function. That way you still get clarity and maintainability, but you're not locking yourself into some heavyweight architecture that's gonna slow you down every time you touch it. So yeah. If you're still defaulting to MVVM and Swift UI in 2025, maybe it's time to ask why. Apple didn't design Swift UI to need view models. You can build complex, maintainable apps without them. Apps that are easier to read, easier to test, and faster to ship. If you've tried going view model free in your Swift UI projects, I'd love to hear your story, the wins, the pain points, and what surprised you. Drop a comment, and if you found this helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, and share it with another indie dev who's deep in Swift UI and may be ready to let go of some old UI kit baggage. Until next time, keep crafting, keep experimenting, and let your views be the view. Peace.